Welcome to the Three Star Podcast. Hey, I am Miles. I'm Sean. And off camera, we have our famous, worldwide, internationally known, undisputed champion of the world, Rich. Hello. And we're finally here. Three Star Podcast is officially live. We are. We are good to go. Episode I'm, numero uno. I'm excited, man. Have you sorted a jingle out for us yet? Do we need a jingle? Have we got a jingle? I find it interesting oh, yeah. whenever anyone has a bookcase. I'm I'm really a, a victim to this now. Is I, I enjoy reading. I've got a lot of books, but I've definitely not read all the books that I've got. And I've probably uh, got enough for like up to like a shelf in here because I only buy books that I'm actually really interested in reading. See, I've got a question for you then. Go on. And that goes to both of you. Do you buy books? I mean, Miles, do you display books? Have you got a bookshelf, a bookcase, or...? I used to, and it literally had one set of books on there, which I'm Harry guessing Potter. you can all guess. Harry Potter. Potter. So See, the question I was going to ask you was, do you have books in your bookcase at home that you've purchased purely for the purpose of people coming around and thinking you're more intelligent and well-bred than you really are? I am a little bit guilty of that. But have got? I have got... I enjoy reading, and I do enjoy... Even though the digital age is great and stuff, I enjoy the... A flick the look and feel and sniff of a oh, book yeah. before Physical purchasing media. yeah okay. and I am guilty to going in some bookstores and I'll read the back for a little bit and have a oh. smell of the pages take it on and then I'll put it on my bookshelf I've got about 45 books or so and they're all like real self development four to five books 45 books right oh yeah it did sound like four to five self development <laughs> books and kind of there's a lot on Buddhism and Hinduism, so I look very cultured you, there. You're quite a spiritual person. Yeah, very, very, very. I would do this, but I'm scared someone would call me out. Oh, that that's that's what happened. It's I a conversation I've, starter, I've, but the I've trick is... That book, Miles, I'd, I'd, I'd have to say to every book, I'd be like, oh, I haven't got around to reading that one yet. Yeah. Just or come on this one in a minute. If yeah. you, what I've found as well, I actually use, is if you've got a highlighter and a pen on top of the books, because I haven't got a bookcase, they're okay. just on the floor, kind of like very... Um, kind of like strategically placed a pile of them <laughs> strategically left with a right highlighter room. on top of them so it looks like that I'm reading them and I'm actually kind of highlighting the parts that I want to bring oh, up no, the discussion I couldn't own a book if I went home and saw someone colouring in my Harry Potter book I think I'd go crazy <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing to highlight just read it and enjoy it but then I've got about so I signed up for Audible and I was using that when I love Audible. That was great for my lung drives and stuff uh, work-wise. But I've got about 50 books that I can't show off there and a half, like, listen to. Oh, yeah, you just press play when someone walks in the door. Oh, sorry, <laughs> let, me just, let me just turn off this. I've actually got a confession here that I've listened to books on Audible and then I've gone out and bought the book. Yeah. And just so I can show people. I've read you, oh, Beowulf. to show it off. Yeah, yeah. I've made the, the mistake the other way around where I've bought the book and realised that I'm never, I'm not reading it, making any progress on reading mm -hmm. it at all. But I'm really interested in it. All the bits that I did read were quite good. Mm -hmm. So I brought it on Audible thinking, yeah, I'll put that on. But then it's just, you know, you you got the whole kind of internet at your fingertips yeah. so when you're, you're driving so you can listen to whatever I you love, want. The only reason I love Audible so much is for the voices. <clears throat> it's not so much for someone reading the book, it's all about who makes the biggest of differences. Reading the book. I tried, even Fry reading Harry Potter. That's the one that I tried. I even bought the first one which is called The Philosopher's Stone. Well done. And it was good. <laughs> I was enjoying it but it was all about him. Now some um, authors read their own books and a lot of the books that I read because it's like it's not like established authors maybe they're a specialist in one kind of subject so they'll have only have one book and then my theory is it must save a massive cost just them reading it yeah yeah I'm sure but the they Thrones can't books. read they can't they can't engage the audience very well I'm sure the Game you know? of Thrones books have different people if you're throughout. listening to someone read the Game of the Thrones and you're a big fan because I've seen the size of some of those books and they are yeah you got it they're, they're not any that's not an easy picture. read is it you need to hear the northern accent. You need to hear the southern Lancaster accent. You need to know whose side you're on. That's a yeah. And as I said, uh, as you know, I'm, I've not even got round to watching Game of Thrones. So uh, I got to about season four. It was no a big problem. one. Yeah. Unless you really enjoy being disappointed, I'd just stop where well, you are. Well, this is it. So it's hard to avoid any spoilers. I don't know what happened in the end, but I know that everyone was disappointed about it. So I just thought, ah. Because nothing, I've kind of nothing, and everything happened. Yeah. That is the best way to explain the ending, of Game of Thrones. Everything happened, but nothing happened. Spoilers, spoilers. The dragons came. She was in the air, flying on two dragons. Didn't see a big ship armada. One dragon gets shot out of the sky. 
Next time she goes to fight them, no one can shoot the dragon at the sky. And All of that, a sudden, I think she's Miles has just lost fifty percent of our uh, listener base for spoiling <laughs> one of the most anticipated uh, this programs. Is, that episode aired a good four months ago. Is, is my, that is that the my is, spoiler limit is three nights. Three nights. You've got the night it drops. Right. I get people are busy. Yeah. You've got the night after. Yeah. I get some people busy. You've then got two nights to prove to me. I really need to catch up on this. Once three nights have gone, you clearly don't care. Enough. That's too short. The only person that I really let off um, spoiling something was I kind of got into Avengers big time. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I've got, um, I was around my nephews and I was saying, oh, I'm getting into Avengers, so I'm going to actually be able to understand all of this stuff that you've been telling me about. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one of them said, oh, have you seen Endgame? I was like, no, but I'm getting there. And then he just said, the big kind of reveal at the end oh the Batman big... dies yeah uh, he told me straight away so uh, I mean that's on you lost passion for it a little bit there are certain things that have no time limit such as Endgame had no time limit there yeah. was a year anticipation wait yeah it was never going to happen um, what else has no time limit I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed that they um... Star Wars like when this new Star oh, Wars comes careful, out careful careful Miles we're getting <laughs> onto a very very <laughs> delicate subject now when this new Star Wars comes out there is no time limit on talking about how good or bad that film was because it's such a cult following it's just going to be I watched it bleh. see I love I love my uh, movies but Star Wars not seen a single episode uh, I, I, is it can, an episode can I leave now can yeah. I, this is, this is <laughs> I know it pains you um, the Marvel ones I'm just getting through now I'm up to Doctor Strange which I think is probably one of the best ones like for the uh, the principles yes. that was really Doctor cool Doctor Strange is my is it my favourite I feel like I'm meant to say Black Panther, but it's Doctor Strange. Yeah, Black Panther was a massive disappointment. Black Panther was average at best. Yeah. The, end the battle, ending is the a end bit... The end battle CGI is absolutely yeah. unforgivable. With, with, I'm, glad, I'm glad that... The, the big battle with the rhinos, that CGI is terrible. The CGI mm -hmm. when it's Black Panther and Killmonger fighting each other is terrible. I terrible. wanted Killmonger to win. He's my favourite character. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> is he that was bad? Good. Is that bad? The fact that he got defeated because a train went past. <clears throat> and... Um, the other one, oh, my, I always have to say this, my favourite character out of all of them that I've seen so far, I don't know his name, but he's in Guardians of the Galaxy. Drax. Is he the blue guy? Batista, yeah. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! No, um, no Yondu. Yeah, yeah, with the whistle Yondu. and the arrow. Yeah. What a character he Yondu. is. But I'm so glad that they waited until like this kind of age when we've got this tech available and the CGI for what you guys said, because imagine if they tried to make these movies in the late 90s. <laughs> well, that's a good question, right? Because if you look at things, have you seen John Carpenter's The Thing? Nope. Right, okay. That yes. was a remake the original. in itself. The, the original Thing from Outer Space was a black and white movie. Okay, yeah. Then they did John Carpenter's The Thing. With the good one. With practical effects. Absolutely. Yes. And the Antarctic, absolutely amazing. Then they redid it. And did you see the new one? It's, it's remakes. It's not a remake, is it? Isn't it a it's a, it's prequel. a prequel? It's a prequel yes, to the original right. Thing, but yeah, it's... Yes. It's appalling. But then... It's CGI. What, who do you prefer? Practical Yoda or CGI Yoda? Practical with Frank Oz voicing it, but I think there's a space for CGI. There's absolutely a place for mm. it, but I think it should be used to enhance practical effects, yes. not that, to replace the wonder that is. Have they, have they done that well with Star Wars? As in, when you, if I was to watch uh, Christmas is coming up, right? It's going to be all over TV, so mm -hmm. maybe I'll have another attempt to at watching it. And there's a very big difference between that ones and the ones that Disney are releasing now in the mm -hmm. look and feel. But are they doing? Are they doing a good job? Have they killed? I've never. Are they watched, diluting it too I've much for the diehards? I haven't watched one of the new Star Wars films. <clears throat> no. Oh, and had start this, and seen terrible. Actually, no. Hold on. What's his name? Because Rich is going to kill me if I forget his name. But Which, it's in give me a, give me a clue. Rogue One. Rogue. Oh, Rogue One. Okay, a Star Wars story. Yeah. Is it Rogue One? Yeah, it is Rogue One, and it's the actor that's died. I'm sure that's Rogue One. You, you mean he died in real the real no, world? No, he's or? real life. The real life actor died, but they use CGI to sort of skinny. Oh, Peter, Peter Cushing as Grand Moff Tarkin. Yes, he was the, the the old dude on the this yeah. Death Star, on the and Star he Star comes Star. back. Yeah, yeah. See, you saying that it's all new to me, but one of the worst things that, that might happened... be a spoiler. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, I just imagine Sean, there because imagine the Rock in the Scorpion King. Oh, that, okay. don't don't go there. Mate. That is... <laughs> no, but the, again, it, it's interesting looking back now. Because at the time, it was great, right? No, at the yeah. time, the Rock in Scorpion King was terrible. That's yeah, one, no, of the, was. one of the uh, very good examples. The, I think of, what, another one appalling. of those examples was there, and this was in 72, Bruce Lee died halfway through making a movie. Yes. Um, uh, not way, Game of Death. Game of Death. And right. what they oh, decided yeah. to do instead of kind of like pan, uh, you know, kill the movie off, 
it was literally halfway made through they decided and this was in hong kong and the production company will come to me after it was really famous for the old like some kung fu movies yeah that made it over to the west they decided to use his like clips of him from other movies and and splice it into game of death i love that and the result of it was just it was no like shame that. was there even then that you know remember like kung fu martial arts is massive in the west for the first time everybody wants to be and thinks they are the next and newest bruce lee I'm, and then they go and watch that and it just kind of it just killed it a little bit i'm a fan because especially when you're dealing with death but like they handled paul walker in fast and the furious good i heard they did got that his well, brother right? yeah. cgi but even if you knew, if you didn't know it was CJ before the film comes out, when he does the whole head look and looks out the window as they're yeah. driving past it. Yeah. You know the whole concept of the Uncanny Valley thing, where if you try and create a realistic looking person, our, the human brain looks at it and it, tell, it knows oh, something's yes. off. Well, how did you guys react to... Um, oh, is, is that, is that technology that Princess they've got Leia. now where they can take you and make you look younger and they use it in the on Iron Man yeah the that, de-aging that's, stuff. that's actually very good if you look at Dark Fate the Terminator Dark Fate which we probably won't talk about right now but that they do a de-aging of um, John Connor and, and the, Sarah Connor yeah. Will Smith's done it recently Gemini, Gemini yeah, yeah. Gemini. Is, have you seen that Habits in Gemini I, I heard, heard it's I've meant heard, to be a, I've heard it's what bad. did someone say it was it's a good movie let down by its budget uh, hmm Apparently. So well, that might mean bad CGI, but it looked like good CGI. Well, let me ask you this then, because over the course of this year, there's been two big remakes. Uh, you mentioned remakes, mm-hmm. uh, Rich, that um, I'm, I want your opinion on. I haven't seen either year. of them. Okay. And you question, you're wondering what they are now. Oh, Disney. Lion King okay, and Aladdin. Yeah. Yeah. How have they done that? Because they've moved from, and I was thinking about this, but when we were growing up, they were car- what I call and refer to as cartoons, right? It was a cartoon Ten, animated. Yeah, they are. No, because they are. that they big shift happened when Toy Story and those came out and it turned into mm. more like the Toy animation. Toy Story was the, yeah. Yeah, Toy Story was the first was the people first one, to right? CGI a whole cartoon. Mm. They did something weird where they do it to both. The art of a cartoon mm. now is kind of uh, slimmer and, and gone, right? Yeah. Like if you watch the new Spider-Man Into the, you, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, oh, that's all CGI. My favourite. That's, my, all that's an amazing brilliant. Film. That's it's how all you do different it. styles of animation for each Spider Man, but mm-hmm. it's all done from CGI. Different mm-hmm. animation styles. Yep. I love the way they brought it all in. Um, but, someone who can just pick up kind of the idea of the Spider Verse or whatever it is and get like, a feel for it. Aladdin got away with it for Will Smith. Mm-hmm. So all up the the big. You seen the animated Aladdin? Of course. So yeah. friend like me in the cave. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they were meant to do that scene. I feel like Will Smith pulled it off. Right. The um, Prince Ali song right at the end again you don't have all the elephants standing on top of each other but they managed to pull that off with all <laughs> the CGI but you're very specific here like as in the scene by scene because, because you're thinking of all Disney the biggest fan, the right? biggest things that happen yeah, yeah. in Aladdin but in terms of the way that they've done it it was perfectly fine because CGI like they did the tiger yeah the tiger doesn't show that much emotion mm-hmm. in the cartoon apart from being angry so in the live action it was just angry Biggest letdown for Lion King, as good as it was, it was never ever going to be as good as the original. I like, yeah. they threw everything into it. They had Lion King, my favourite movie, full stop. Mm-hmm. Beyonce, my favourite yeah. person, <laughs> <laughs> full stop. Childish Gambino, they had um, Michael Key. Yeah. They had oh, Seth Rogen as Pumba. They had, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had, they had the casting down to a T. They even brought back Sir James Earl Jones from yeah, Mufasa. But it, under the understanding that no one else could possibly yeah, fill that role just, they knew I think they were doing the exact same thing if oh why have I forgot his name a Genie who played Genie originally Robin Williams Robin Williams, Robin Williams. Yeah. there we go yeah. how did I forget if Rob Williams hadn't died I feel like he would have come back and done Genie but did Will Smith do mm. a good job of it yeah okay you know what but it was two was different good. two different Genies the only person I think that could have come close to doing what Robin Williams did would have been Jim Carrey Oh, in, in his peak, segue in his prime. to something I wanted to bring in up. Prime. Has anyone seen the new version of the Sonic? I was going to get done. onto this. I watched it yesterday. The Sonic remake, and it looks like Sonic. It, it last. It, it does. It looks like what we all Still relate. Still going to be a bad movie. Yes. <laughs> but thank you. It's going and, to although look. it will probably be better than the uh, original uh, Mario. Oh, the Mario movie. Yeah. <laughs> With Bob Hoskins. Yeah. Let's do a remake though. Give it a chance. Yes, they will do. If there are films that are due remakes, that's up there with Dragon Ball Z, but we won't get onto that just yet. I, I, again, that's another one that's passed me, but I did watch the um, Sonic, the new version. 
and I, the first thing I did was instantly go to the comments to see what all the fans are saying about it. Everyone's super happy. The issue that I have is it. I don't know what they tried. To, it's like they tried to make it too live action. Well, let me let me let yeah. me uh, tell you one of the comments that I put that I thought I really enjoyed reading was um, plot twist. The production company made it deliberately bad to start with to buy themselves some more time. Is this a conspiracy and theory? And then to get a real bit of kind of... There's a lot behind it now. Everyone's going... Everyone's uh, watching this trailer and anticipating the, the release based on that. That's a great marketing, isn't it? If they made it ba bad and then said, you know what, we're listening to the fans. Let's fix it for you. They look like a feral sort of hairy rat thing. Yeah, it was it disgusting. Was, it was weird. Now it looks like Sonic. For everyone listening, Rich has pulled up a comparison of the older... Sonic that Versus. made it to the first trailer where he's very lifelike and Look then the, the one eyes, that dropped recently and the ears and he looks much more cartoonized um, and his teeth do think, don't look yeah, like he he's got veneers it, it was scary because he looked like a too human does that make sense it does yeah, yeah. and everyone kicked off but now he, they've uh, apparently from what I read in the comments they've nailed it but uh, yes, can I say a word can I say a long word at this point go anthropomorphic Anthropomorphic. Yeah, yeah the, when you uh, when you humanize animals, humanize an if you animal. do it too much, the original idea was just to get a real hedgehog and dye it blue, but they couldn't train it sufficiently, <laughs> so they went down CGI and then they got it slightly wrong. But they they got back on track eventually. <laughs> oh yeah, but something that it, this has reminded me of is I always like to do you know when you're watching like older movies, yeah, and then they are kind of looking at what they think the future is going to look like. Yes, mm. and they're set. For example, Back to the Future, right? Yeah. But I think it's set like maybe last year, 2018. And if you're thinking in the 80s, they're, oh, when was that movie made as well? I think it was in the 80s, right? Yeah. And they're looking at what does 2018 look like? You've got the hoverboards, the self lace Nike boots, which are available, by the way. They yeah. are. So they're 32 grand a pop. They are, but what's happened there is Back to the Future said, right, when, come out in 89. Back to the Future said in 2018, we're going to have. Or 2019, we're going to have hoverboards, flying cars, self tying up laces, yeah. and much more. And those, the <laughs> only was the three things. They're the main three things. <laughs> There's just some yeah, light yeah, thing yeah, that yeah, they yeah, thought yeah, in 20 yeah, years' time yeah. we'll have this. Yeah. The laces were created because of the movie. Yeah. So those night trainers have been created for the movie, and they're not just, you can't just go to JD or Foot Locker mm. or. Not at thirty-two thousand pounds, you kind. What other examples of tech from looking in the past, where they've kind of like got it really wrong? Uh, um, bring to uh, oh, spring to mind. Blade Runner. No, and really, Androids. Really this, the so. original. Bla you haven't seen the original Blade not, Runner. Yeah, I started a conversation. I'm not going to be very good at. <sighs> Blade Runner. It's at, uh, well, Blade Runner. You've got. What have they got in there? They've got androids. They've got flying cars. Flying cars. Fully functioning androids. What's Blade Runner right? about in one, in one sentence? It's, no it's, spoilers. It's based on a book by Isaac Asimov called Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? And it's about some off-world and on-world androids, replicants, that appear to be like humans who become kind of self-aware. But they've all got a built-in redundancy that they could die at some point and they are aware of their own mortality. And of course, some go wrong. The singularity, right? And yeah, and Harrison Ford's character, Decker, is charged with uh, tracking down and kind of eliminating the remaining rogue right. robots who want to live. I need to interject because only yesterday I watched, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, this is embarrassing, Ex Machina or Ex yeah. Machina? Ex oh Machina. my God, what a movie. Everyone's seen the Will Smith one, right? What's that, Miles? The Will Smith one. Uh, iRobot? iRobot, yeah. Right. They In that movie, they refer to the laws of... AI, the, I the three laws. The three laws. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. same rules are also featuring the Robin Williams movie, which is called, and when he plays a robot, that yes. over the course of the movie becomes uh, more and more lifelike. Bell. Bicentennial Man. Bicentennial Man. Man. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. I'll, pu I'll pull it up for you. Okay. So I know one of them you can't kill. I'm sure, or it's a long line. So if you can't kill, you can't harm humans. Mm. You must obey your master. A robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. So, pause. They're looking after us, right? Yeah. At that yeah. stage, they're looking after so us. So they're going to live amongst I us. I can't Great. harm you and I can't do anything to you that could cause harm, mm. i.e. throw you off a building. You can't so sit back stage, and allow you to Oh, yeah, and I can't yourself. sit back and allow you to... At that stage, we're looked after so they can live amongst us. Yeah. yeah. Law, so, law number two. Law number two. A robot must obey the orders given given it by a human being, except where such orders 
would conflict with the first law. Okay. So, okay, now we've got something that we're, we're, we've, we've made them, we've made, we've made AI, we've achieved that, and, but humankind's ego is still coming where it's saying, listen, you can live amongst us, but don't even think about being above us. You've got to do everything that we say. Absolutely. Right? Modern okay. day slaves. Okay, so yeah. Um, we're on board so far. Okay, cool. Okay. Third one, <clears throat> open to interpretation. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. So it can keep itself safe, but as long as that keeping itself safe doesn't harm a human being. So if I drive at you, if a robot's running, about to run you over, no, if I'm about to run a robot over, that robot can get out of the way. If a robot's driving a car... No, so if I'm you... driving a car at a robot right. and I'm trying to kill that robot... He's allowed to get out of the way. Even if I say don't move. Can we stop referring to them as robots at this stage, please? Because if AI and the singularity has happened, they have got feelings. We've got to have more respect. What's the official so, term for it then? Is it sort of sentient synthetic being or di di differently human? <laughs> ask speaks me about that. <laughs> oh, those, the reason I brought those up was um, by Centennial Man. Yes. I, Robot. They, all, they both share those laws, right? And then yes. I was, I'm watching X, what are we going with? X Machina. Machina? 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 Yeah. Machina? Is that what we're going with? X Machina. That is a yeah, word. Yeah, X Machina. Yeah. The way that movie was played out for me was fantastic about the... Um, I don't know how recently you guys have seen it. He keeps on asking the guy who's there to test the robots or the AI. He's like, uh, keeps on asking, how do you feel about her? Then how does she feel about you? Because he, they refer to it about a game of chess, so... There's a computer that's programmed to play chess because yeah. it can play chess all day long. What you need to work out is does it know that it's playing chess? And then an advancement of that, does it know that you're testing it on playing chess sort of thing? So it's uh, all the layers within it. Yeah. And then I just found it really interesting where you mentioned about... Uh, because in the movie, the guy who's developed it is the owner of the biggest search engine in the world, which for the sake of the movie is a company called Blue Book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, he says basically that the world thought that everyone was learning or Blue Book was learning what people want to, are thinking, but actually is learning how they think and all of this intelligence. So she is actually Blue Book and all of Blue Book's kind of input over time. So mm -hmm. that's how she can, how she, her intelligence kind of grows sort of thing. Yesterday, actually, I, I was searching something on Google. I used my voice and I, I Googled some, oh, I forget what it was. And I said, um, I asked it a question, but she said, okay, I'll remember that. And I was like, when is that information ever going to come into play again? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what am I actually telling you? Yeah, I've got to tell you these things. I'm surprised all these things have lasted this long. Only because I remember when TVs came out. I remember when Samsung did a TV and it had a camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In mm -hmm. the front of yeah. the TV. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, we're just going to be here. I'm just going to learn how you watch TV mm -hmm. and program the best TV programs for you and I haven't seen a camera on a TV since then because so many people kicked off. Really? Now, you've got a, a home assistant in over 50% of homes these yeah, days. Yeah, easy. They're, they're really accessible to get. They're not very expensive. Um, I think what people need to, what we need to get over the curve of now is people really benefiting from having them in there. So they're not like, my dad's got one. He just asks it kind of um, play some music, which is pretty much basic and there's an alarm clock. You know, that's it. But for yeah. me, I haven't touched a light switch in over a year in my home. Uh, my heating turns on 10 minutes before I get home sort of thing, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I think if you learn how you can you can resist as much as you want, but the future's happening <laughs> every second, right? That's the dark. future is happening. And if you have got, if you're willing to kind of open up to the ideas that it can assist you, you're, you're going to really you benefit the nail on the head. Yeah. It's got to be simple, it's got to be connected, and it's mm. got to be meaningful. Yeah. That should be our three laws, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> if it's not simple, people won't use it. If yeah. it's not connected, then it, it, there's just no, there's not a lot of point to it. You know, you've got to get from A to Z with it. I use um, Samsung SmartThings as mm -hmm. my kind of bridge to it all. It's like the heartbeat behind it all. And I cannot explain how simple it is to go to IKEA and buy a £12 light bulb Put it into the socket. You and spend then, twelve pounds on light bulb. Twelve pounds, but then you haven't got to touch a light bulb for the rest of your life. Sure. You can determine what tone of white it goes and to sure. and what dimming setting. Sean sold on. this the way he's selling it to me, but I was a bit too late and already brought the Philips Hue ones. Yeah, but that, that's the they're supposed to be more. You've got multi colours on those. Yeah, right? I've, I've, I've the, just got the mine were the cheapest. I spent that room. money on those Philips Hue Hues yeah. just to make my living room purple. Purple. That does but not. This thing has purple. over. A hundred thousand colours, it says, and mine goes to one colour. <laughs> and sometimes it's a variant of purple, because I'll yeah. say, Alexa, make the living room purple. Uh, and depending on what she thinks is purple, mm. I'm like, let me just change that a little bit. 
And you change the hue of the... Change the hue. And then I'll say, Alexa, good night. And then all the lights in the house so will turn can off. I, can I just interject slightly, right? So Asimov foresaw the future of AI and, and, and androids or whatever. Where they would be helping us, they would be living amongst us. They would be doing tasks that we can't do. You know, cooling expired nuclear reactors, things like that. Yeah. And you guys have you've, you've bought into this whole new technology yeah. and you you literally just use it to change the color of your light bulbs <laughs> at the moment but it's Is a, that as far as we've it's got? a never-ending project right it's yeah. you're right and it's hilarious i live in a one-bed apartment so i'm very limited on yeah, to work uh, kind of the things that i can for have me, it was situational only because i always said i'm not going to buy a home assistant because i'm never going to use it mm-hmm. brought a new boiler that new boiler came with a smart thermistor yeah and then when i set up my th- smart thermostat they were like hey here you go go claim your free a home assistant. Really? So I got that free for getting something free for buying a boiler. Had it in the house and was like, what am I going to use it for? Started, only ever used it for setting timers. Mm -hmm. Now I can do it with my TV if I want to turn the TV off when it's late at night and I can't be bothered to look for the remote. I will just say, turn the TV off in the morning. Yes. Turn the living room on and the whole living room will turn on. I think that's what... I use it more and more than just changing the light. Uh, How much was the Hue bulbs? Do you remember? I paid one fifty, and I think that was for the starter kit, and, starter kit, and three light bulbs and a remote, which is an incredible deal, really. Mm. However, one fifty in one big shot is a lot of money to people, mm-hmm. right? Whereas a, a ten or twelve pound light bulb IKEA, I pick them yeah. up. You know that that's manageable, right? Connects up the next cheap. The next thing is super easy to set up. You yeah. know, you know, like I was gonna say on a. The Samsung smart thing yeah. to put the bulb in. I say that I'm searching for a new light bulb. It asks me to turn the switch on and off. Like uh, there's a certain code, like on, off, wait two seconds. So I'm not, and then brrr, you're connected. I never have to touch that again. So super easy. Mm-hmm. Me controlling my lights through my voice is fantastic. Me turning my heating on, especially now yeah. before I get home. What I love as well, I got um, one of the Bixby routines set up where mm-hmm. as I approach my um, gates to the apartment block, my lights turn on automatically you know so you just give yourself a little oh, bit of an atmosphere yeah. to get into your apartment to um, so you, you raised a good point there sean it was about say setting up routines is fantastic but how many people really do wake up at the same time every morning do the same routine mm. want their coffee at this temperature at this time so having your phone which you've always got on you yeah connected through smart things and because smart things does talk to but google and amazon that's it. this is it my you are. sensor this not this exactly. is what does the talking it just knows the so, as a present sensor yeah, it, it, so when you've got close so when you're driving home it knows kind of how far you are so it knows to start you know turning the oven on so you can get your your, your pheasants yeah. roasted for your evening meal things like that so you know <laughs> it, it's great to have the routine but also have it knows kind of where you are. We're gearing up to, I'm going to put a timeline of let's say 60 years, because I'm just going for it, to a point where we're going to say, Alexa, make me some food. And then your AI is literally just going to come walking past you straight into the kitchen and start making you some food and you're connected that way. And that will be the end of my lonely, sorry existence then. So can we, uh, can we agree to meet up in six, six years, years time, time just to check whether Miles is on the money? I, I'm down for that. <laughs> the only other yeah. one that I want uh, Gertrude, I want my AI That's what I'm going to call him <laughs> Gertrude You can't uh, The AI will name itself Thank you very much <laughs> right, You know what It probably would <laughs> The only other thing is We always um, In the movies They always make the AI In a human form Like the As the, an interface for us to Kind of talk to I guess yeah. yeah Would you be bothered If it never kind of manifests In a human form But it's just like your home your voice um, assistant, your, voice yeah, assistant yeah. Your, your your mobile device, which really is, if I uh, my what, one of my grandparents been uh, died when I was kind of like ten or something. If I showed her that, that would be AI to her. That, that that's it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so, this is smart, but we're only getting smarter. We, everyone's only getting smarter, and that is a a lot of people back uh, twenty years ago would have said that's smart enough. Because someone said that back in the 1800s, That's the interesting before thing. aeroplanes yeah. mm-hmm. and TVs got made, they were like, everything that has been invented has been invented. Yeah. I don't picture an, an something else being invented. It's just new ways of watching TV. Yeah. So I'm like, what's the, well, what's the next tech going to be for watching something? Because you've got VRs, that's already created. Yeah. You've got AR, that's already created. You've already got a flat screen. You've already got the options of 3D. AI so to an extent. What? I still can't comprehend how are we going to watch something 
next. TVs. I remember I got so excited when I bought um, one of Samsung's 3D TVs. Wow. And it was amazing. Like, And watching sport on it, I turned it on. I even went to the trouble of finding the sport mode in the sound settings. Uh, yeah. You were there. It was great. But realistically, it just never really kind of kicked off. It ne- well, it never stayed. But going to the cinema, I watched the... I watched the uh, Christmas Carol, the Jim Carrey one, um, in 3D. Amazing. I, want to watch, I wanted to watch all my movies in 3D after so, that. I hate 3D. 3D. Yeah. I think 3D TVs were a gimmick considering. I think 3D TVs got made because of Avatar. Avatar was one of the last few movies that was massively promoted in 3D. Like, look at Endgame, Infinity War, Star Wars, any big no 3D. cinematic thing. No, they have 3D, but you never ever see it or will ever see it advertised for 3D. When you think of like 10 years ago, the push for Avatar was come and see this in 3D. Mm. I'll see your 3D and what? I'll raise you if you ever experienced 5D. 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 Go on then. Rich, with the wind blowing through your hair. So, and... especially if you go kind of like um, Disneyland in oh, okay. Florida no, or anything like that. The, no, uh, it didn't set, it didn't rest with me very well, but a lot of um, theme park rides, they're no longer just kind of on the tracks and you kind of enjoy no, no. your ride. They actually have elements where they stop and it'll give you that kind of like the VR experience. Okay, yeah. So cool. it was real trippy to kind of like get your head around as being someone who thinks that rides are just what we're used to. Segwaying back into some of the films and tech. So uh, I think it's in Universal Studios. They've got T2, so Terminator 2 um, 3D, Battle Across Time. And that was written by and directed by the original people. And that was like the true follow-on to Terminator 2. And it was a 5D experience. Yeah. Is that like you say? You're moving around, you've got yeah. the explosions, the noise. It's very visceral. Yeah. And then they ruined it with the new film. It's not very so good. The... What's 4D? It's 3D with another one added on. <laughs> get, get with me. <laughs> oh, so you've got 3Ds when it jumps out the screen. Okay, so I think... Is, I think if your I... chair moves... You, know you know when you go to like some cinemas and the chair moves? Yeah, like that's you've feel. Got, so it's and four. you've got the wind... Is that four or is that part of the five D experience? Uh, so, because I'm just trying to say, when does cinema now? When does cinema take the next step and somehow involve smell? What ah, this is it. So, Rich will search what five D is for us. But at the same time, I think five D is um, in direct correlation to the senses. No, so you don't watching have... TV and watching, listening to TV. Listening. There, there's oh. yeah, there's two dimensions. The fourth dimension is time. Time. So. Yeah, but that's from a that's from a scientific stand. Can you put t- type in amusement parks at the end of that uh, <laughs> at the end of that bit to be searched? I'm, I'm, you're doing. Pl- I'm plucking all this stuff straight out of my brain. It's yeah, not coming off the internet at all. 4D film. It says it's a marketing term for an entertainment presentation uh, or system combining a 3D film with physical effects that occur. That so when are you have synchronized with the film. So when oh, you have kind of like the the, so the, the wind chairs, blowing. The moves, the have you ever had the wind moves. blowing on like I've on your feet or anything right. like that, or on your and the temperature changes, yeah. or I've been on something where like stuff will fall out the ceiling and it will kind of like touch you, like it, it's a scary one, moment or something yeah. like that. So. That is cinema to me. That should be standard. That's what I want. When there's, when there's a time when that is standard in the cinema. I don't know. I, 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 I started this off, I was mentioning the 3D aspect of TVs, but I, I do think that TV, you know, just watching it, Listening to it, it's kind of... You know what, you've raised a really good point here because you're saying about TVs and we had cameras in them and people didn't really like mm. that and then 3D and then it kind of went and a lot of films have failed because they only got limited release just in 3D. Yeah. Mm. But the way we watch films is very different. So where will TV go in the future, going back to that, is it's completely different now. A social viewing experience now will be Miles watching something on Netflix yeah. and then saying sending a message over to us going, oh, check this out and we'll yeah. watch it then we talk about it. It's a really different but beast now. This is this is especially as we uh, we're riding the crest of this wave of five uh, G introducing itself, and uh, I've got I've got a five G device, so I'm really lucky. I have got the S ten five G, fantastic. Nice. Um, you're on about buying the A ninety. You were saying the other day. Yeah. Um, so then, we, if we're if we're both being able to embrace this five G mm-hmm. as it kind of. 2019 brought it to the forefront and 2020 is going to be really exciting. I think bringing people together and connectivity 
is going to be where that, that enhances experience. So it might not be smell of vision as Miles is pushing for. It, it might not be. be temperature changing as you're watching something, but um, that feel uh, that it seems that he's after that that second that next wave of like feeling that yeah. connectivity might be with and the way you enjoy it with other people. I don't know. Yeah, but... five G can bring us all together because we're not geographically in the same place. Uh, it means that we can actually connect a lot in a much quicker and more robust way. And actually, yeah, it brings everyone together, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and I'll I'll um, kind of uh, as we as we wrap up, I'll uh, leave you with this one. I, re- I was reading some of these kind of um, it's clickbait basically as I was scrolling through uh, Facebook. But one of the things that it brought up was the sentence "Where are you?" Saying the sentence "Where are you?" is a new thing because historically you always knew where someone was as you were communicating with them. So through a letter, you know where you were sending that letter to, and even up to like home phones, you knew where they were. And apart from the fact of maybe being in the house and your mum shouting, where are you? You know, you always <laughs> knew where someone was. But now with the, the invent of mobile kind of connectivity, asking someone where they are is quite new. And mm. I, thought, I thought that was a bit of mm. that was something to think about. But I, I think as we, uh, as we exit out of, out of uh, today's episode, I thought yeah. uh, that would be a nice little Sean's thinking Sean's corner. thought of the day. Thought of the day. Sean's there thought of the day. Uh, guys, if you want to... Add any of your comments into what we've been discussing today and clear up any of the things that we were way off and completely wrong with. Rich and just Astons. remember, Sean hasn't seen Terminator, hasn't seen Star Wars, only just started okay. watching Marvel. I don't know what other movie where franchises. Is he, where, where are you in time, Sean? I need Where Are Any of Us in Time. Ooh, save that for another episode. Uh, okay. Uh, guys, thank you very much and see you at the next one. We have been the Three Star Podcast. We have.